but much like in real life, you don't always know what those consequences are, and they're not always the ones that you intend. So by participating in all this and building the city, you've anchored the goblin thing, a character we haven't even met yet. But because he has likes and dislikes, and he really, really dislikes it when you build a city in his territory without his permission. So he's going to send an army of orcs and moles and goblins, and the rallying call reaches its climax. Now you have the opportunity to fight the invaders, destroy the catapults as they're trying to destroy your walls. You have the ability to fight the infiltrators that come in. And you remember the quarry from before, no one plugged the hole, and now monsters are coming out of it, and someone's got to go down there and deal with that too. So as players participate and come together, they will advance the rallying call, and they will defeat the Goblin King, and the rallying call will end. And now that city will be a permanent part of the world that they have helped to shape. And when a new player comes on two weeks later, it looks to that player like this city has always been there. They won't know that it once was a tent city unless they talk to you. So after, uh, after some time, when you have conversations with people, someone will say, hey, what was the world like at launch? And you'll say, well, that was before the dragons attacked, and before the Civil War, and before we made friends with the Goblin King, and now he sells us cheap lumber. So your ability to interact with the world that way is going to give you an ability to have a story that you remember. So that's EverQuest next. We're really happy with how it's coming along. But something funny happened while we were building it. And to build this world out of boxes, we had to create all new tools that never existed before. And it turned out those tools were really, really fun to use. And because of that, we had people staying in the office late. People would be on, there on the weekends designing things and building things. Not just the artists, but the producers. And the stuff that they were building was pretty cool. So we had the idea, what if we gave the tools to the players and let them help us build EverQuest Next. So this winter, we're launching a product called EverQuest Next Landmark. And what Landmark is, it's a tool that's going to let you design and create anything you can imagine. When you go into Landmark, you're going to create a character. You're going to do all the normal customization things you're used to. You're going to be an adventurer class. And by playing this in Landmark, you're going to unlock the ability to take this class with you into EverQuest Next. So you'll be able to multi-class on day one. We'll just let them count for a minute. So as you play in Landmark, you're going to be able to take those things that you build and create, and you're going to be able to move them with you to EverQuest Next. So if you're a guild leader, you can go ahead and build, build your guild hall so that you're ready on day one for your guild. You're going to start in a starting zone, then you're going to travel out from here into the world where you're going to be able to build and create things. Now, other people are going to be able to destroy the things you create as well. And we realize that that's not the gameplay that everyone wants. So what we're going to do is give every player in the game a flag. Now, you're going to go out and find a piece of land that you like. You're going to put that flag in the ground and claim it. And that land is now your land. And on your land, you can do whatever you want. You can let people build with you. You can let people destroy it. You can say, no one ever comes on your land. It's your land. It's your rules. Landmark is going to have the same tiered content as EverQuest Next. So a deep world. Five or six different environments. It's going to have multiple ways to do fast travel through the world and across servers. We're going to have the heroic movement system, the parkour system, and at, at Gamescom we're also announcing that we're going to have mounts in Landmark. Those mounts are also going to use the parkour system. Basically, you're going to travel through the world exploring, finding different kinds of materials. You're going to bring those back to your area. You're going to use them to craft objects and construct the things that you want to build. And I'm going to show you a video. This is a time-lapse video, about 46 minutes. This is two people working in Landmark. And you notice how quickly they're able to just take out huge pieces 
pieces of the world. Because in Landmark, we allow you to shape the size of the tool you're using so that you don't have to do things one block at a time. So this is what it looked like before. 46 minutes later, this is what it looks like. This is because the tools are very powerful. They're actually the same tools that the developers are using. As you can see, you can reshape the brush size. You can get it down to a tiny, tiny brush. And you can actually you know, use that to sculpt very fine material. We also have a smoothing tool. So you can take something that starts as a cube and turn it into a perfect sphere. In fact, everything that's been in every one of the videos we've shown you today has been built with this tool. Here's another video. This is, again, two players, 36 minutes. This is what it looked like before, 36 minutes later. Now, let me remind you that this is a fully functioning MMO. This isn't Photoshop Online. This is a complete MMO about building and creating things. So, you're going to have friends lists. You're going to be able to go ahead and form builds, which you can then bring over to EverQuest Next. You're going to have co-op build-outs. And what this means is, if you're wandering through the world, and you see someone building something awesome, like say the Empire State Building, you can talk to them, and you can join in and help them build those amazing things. Multiple people can do this at the same time. So it will be amazing to see what people come up with. We're going to have text chat. We're going to have VoIP. And the SOA mode that we showed you before. Another thing that we're adding and announcing at GameStop is leaderboards. And this isn't going to work like it does in, say, League of Legends. Our leaderboards are going to allow you to up and down vote people's uh, buildings based on how creative or cool you think they are. So we'll very quickly see who's got cool stuff and who doesn't. This is really important because we have a program called Player Studio. And with Player Studio, you're able to package your creations up and put them on our in-game marketplace. And when people buy those things off the marketplace, Sony pays you for that. So you can actually make money by playing Landmark. We've had a lot of success with this program in other games, so we're expanding it for Landmark. We're adding an achievement system. We're adding, we're adding filtering and following tools, as well as the ability to package up those claims and buy and sell them across servers. The most important thing, though, is we really want you guys to participate in helping us build EverQuest next. So we're going to be running contests and player community events to say, okay, we want to put the Mad God's Temple in EverQuest next. Here's the concept art. Here's the lore. Here's the design director's notes. Go. And in 30 days, we're going to pick the best one, and that is going to become the actual temple in the game EverQuest Next. EverQuest Next is going to be the first game to ever ship with player-created content on day one. I'll show you one last video. This one is three hours, sorry, three hours and 20 minutes. Two players again. Now, while this is happening, I want you guys to think about, this is two players for three hours. Imagine if everyone in this room was building a landmark for three hours. Now, imagine if thousands of people on your server are all building for three hours. What is that going to look like? Now, imagine what that world is going to look like in three weeks or in three months. What is that world going to look like after players have been doing this for three years? Look at the level of detail above the pillars on both sides, the sculpting and shaping that they're able to do. That kind of level of detail is not available in any other building game. For the EverQuest fans, this is an ogre house. So this is what it looked like before. Three hours and 20 minutes later, this is what it looks like. We're absolutely thrilled and cannot wait to see what our players are going to do with these tools because we know you guys are going to do a million times better than we ever can. So that's EverQuest Next and EverQuest X Landmark. Thank you guys so much for your time. We really appreciate it.